Hey folks, Rob Avis here with Verge Permaculture. Today I'm here with Sam and she runs Blastberry Orchards as well as Sassage's Adventure Farm. And we're gonna learn all about Hascaps, how they grow, what they need from a nutrition perspective, and some of the unique holistic practices that Sam uses on her orchard. So Sam, tell me a little bit about your orchard and also your adventure farm. What, what do we have here? Where, where are we located? And what inspired you to take on such a massive project? We're just south of Spruce Grove. And when we first bought the property, the plan was always to be self-sufficient food-wise for ourselves and our family. We originally started with a small orchard of 1,500 Hascap bushes, but got super excited about the product and uh, the food value in it. And we expanded it to about 13,000. We did have a plan to put a second orchard in the back corner of the property, but with the U pickers coming out, we found that the um, there was this huge demand for people to see farms. They don't have those grandparents with the horse and the cow and the pig anymore. So we kind of reversed our plan to put a uh, the second orchard in and we started Sassy G's Adventure Farm. So people get the benefit of coming out and sitting on the ground and picking, picking the berries and visiting with their kids across a bush. But after that, they can go to the other parking lot and see our pigs and our cows and play for a few hours. There is no one berry on the bush that's gonna look the same. A raspberry always looks like a raspberry, looks like a raspberry. Every Hascap has a different shape, a different size, a different width, kind of a unique berry that way. Everybody always wants that blueberry because the anthocyanins and the flavonoids in it. Uh, the Hascap, um, I have some graphs uh, that show that the University of Saskatchewan did. Um, it's got three times, three times the flavonoids and anthocyanins. Of a blueberry. Of a blueberry. Wow. Yeah. What, what got you inspired to grow your own food? You said you, you guys wanted to grow your own food for self-supply first. We all know when you go to the grocery stores that there's all always pesticides, herbicides, um, and lots of nitrates given to these plants so that you've got the big, big blueberry or berry, uh, but no food value in it. So just getting back to what we knew when we were kids and growing up on the farm and feeding the soil properly so that we've got you know, high food value in our products and uh, feeding ourselves properly. I find it so interesting that somehow our, our cultural narrative has accepted the fact that we just spray our food with poison that, that's like neurotoxin and hormone disruptors and that it's totally normal to do that and then put it into a package and sell it in a grocery store. Like To me that's nuts and that everybody doesn't see that blows my mind. But I'm curious what the thing for you was that kind of got you saying something's not right here. Grandkids. Mm. You know, like there, you see them out picking berries and you, you, you know you don't want anything on that bush that they're picking and they're putting it straight into their mouths. Uh, you know, self-health for sure and, and self-care and that of my kids, but yeah, grandkids is a big motivator. Mm. Makes you rethink everything. Yeah. The neat part about the Hascap is there is no bug parasites. We don't have to spray for parasites. The birds are the only... Uh, pest that we have. It's got a really hairy stem and also the underbelly of the leaf, which most bugs don't like. You won't very often ever see even a ladybug on them because it's rough to their underbelly and they don't like it. A lot of people think that as soon as it's blue, it's ripe. What we need to do is we need to split it here and it'll still be super green on the inside. So this one's nowhere near. We've got at least two, three weeks before and, and the size has to grow. So the other neat thing about the Hascap is the berry has actually a bloom on it. Some people would come out to the U-Picks and they think that I've sprayed chemical on it, but this is just like the plum and it has this, this little bloom on it. There is a couple orchard in BC that actually get their staff to hand pick this with white gloves so there isn't that fingerprint on it and they ship it over to Japan and they pay premium dollars to keep that bloom on. Production per bush varies greatly on two things. Well, your variety of bush, but also what you're feeding your bush. You know, the more you're feeding it, the healthier it is, you're gonna get more production. Also, the bees have a big, big influence on our production. We don't own the bees. We have Revive honeybees come in and they've, we've only got 12 hives here. He's got 35 hives up on the other side. And without these bees, we would have absolutely no berries. We need them to cross pollinate. So when we first got this property, it was a 
100% pasture, old pasture that had never been fed. So we added into our soil manures. We had some old alfalfa bales that were moldy. We cultivated that in. And we also pulled out about at least 50 old dead trees in their dead fall, some that were dead standing and we mulched it and we put that into our soil. We made sure that when we first put the cover crop in, uh, it was white clover, the alsis clover, and then the, the orchard grass and some fescues to fill in holes like this. So when we mow, of course, that's all still going back into the soil, but it also attracts the bees, which we definitely need. We need to, for them to know that this is where they can come to eat. We always do our, our soil samples in the fall. So that, when I send that away, that will tell me if there's calcium in the soil, but also what calcium is available. Not all calcium is available to my plants. Um, we're gonna send a tissue culture away here again shortly. And what it'll tell me, it's like, it's like doing blood work for us. It tells me what's actually in the plant. Then we know what we need to put in the soil in the fall so that in the spring, it's there available to, to feed my plants. And of course, when you feed the plants, you're feeding the, the berry, uh, which in turn feeds us, of course. Where can people find out more about your operation, how to pick some of these berries, the adventure farm that you've got running? Where can people find you on the internet? Uh, right now, um, it, we, we only have a Facebook page. We're working on the website for Blast Berry Orchard. Uh, and then from there, there's lots of links also to Sassy G's Adventure Farm. Awesome. Sam has told me that these berries get picked very quickly. So if you want to try a Haskap, if you've never tried one, then make sure you get here as soon as it's ready. <laughs> Sam, thanks so much for taking us to your orchard today. I learned an absolute ton about Haskaps. You're welcome.